Good morning, everybody. What an amazing song. Didn't you just enjoy that words? Even in the valley. And now I must preach after such a song. And I cheated. I have my T-shirt on already. It's only for tonight. And it's not only because I'm excited about tonight, but it's also because I have a word and I didn't even know I'm going to preach and the T-shirt was being printed. And then Yamon sing a song about a table. <laughs> Isn't God good? And it's Jesus. He wants to speak to you in this morning. And he really um, gave me a, a short word in my heart. And I believe you're going to really enjoy it this morning. So, yeah, just put your hand on your heart and say, Jesus, thank you for my heart. Thank you that my heart will yearn this morning and that you will touch me. You will speak to me and your word will change me in Jesus' name. Amen. So I'm just going to start right at the beginning, not in Genesis, <laughs> but at the beginning of David's life. We all know that um, the people before David's time, the people wanted a king. And the Lord wasn't really pleased with that, but they I just kept on asking, we want a king, we want a king, we want a king. And the Lord said, okay, let's make Saul king. So he decided, uh, let's, let's just make Saul king. So Saul was anointed by Samuel, and he became the king, and he went on. And, and soon he disobeyed God. So he was rejected because of his rebellion, because of his disobedience. He disobeyed God, and then he kind of lost it. <laughs> okay, and in the meanwhile, while he was um, rejecting God and disobedient, Samuel's heart was really hurting, and he um, was mourning for Saul's life and what happened. And God, the Lord, told um, Samuel, "Stand up, get over this. I prepared for myself a king. Go to Jesse, and there you will find a, a, a young lad." and I'm going to anoint him, and he's going to be, for myself, a king who will lead my people in the right paths. So Samuel went, and we all know the story. All the other sons were standing there, and um, um, David, where was David? He was tending the sheep. He was in the field playing his harp. He um, rescued and saved the sheep from the bear, from the lion, and it's in that place, in that place where I believe David David's foundation was laid. It's in that place where, where he learned about God's love and God's mercy. The song said it, Yamon said it in, before the service as well, God is full of grace and mercy. We are speaking about committed to love. We are speaking about loving one another. We are speaking about loving God in this whole few months and terms that, or this term, um, we, we were just focusing on the love of God. And I believe that's where David, in that place, where he wasn't seen, he wasn't seen while he wasn't seen, he was in that place where he was just in the presence of God, where he just played his harp. His business was just to be tending and caring and loving Jesus. And there he learned to be victorious. He learned to be brave. He learned because of the love of Jesus and because of knowing, really knowing and experiencing the love of Jesus, he didn't have any fear. You see it right from the start of his ministry, right from his start, not even yet known in the field, the bear came, the lion came. There was no fear. He had complete trust and surrender in a God who loves him. And his life was completely sold out to Jesus. If I die today, it's fine. You are my protector. You are my shelter. You are the lover of my life. You are the shepherd of the sheep. As I watch over this sheep, you will watch over me. And we can't really walk in a full revelation of who God is if we haven't experienced his love. Because the other name for Jesus is salvation, but the other name for God is love. And that is Jesus' Father. His name is love. There's no height, there's no shadow, there's no darkness. His name is love. And David knew the love of God, which protected him, and he never had fear. Never. He faced the bear. He faced the lion. So what happened 
Samuel went to David, and he anointed him king. And the Bible said, says right after Samuel anointed David as king, the spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him. And in the next verse it says, and the spirit of God left Saul, and an evil spirit came, and he was tormented. He was tormented, and it wasn't nice. So at times the people told um, we were worried about Saul, and they told someone, get us someone that can help Saul because he's just tormented and afflicted by this evil spirit. He's troubled. So David would come, and he would play the harp, and then soon Saul felt better. And it was just a, in a matter of time, then Goliath started with all his sayings, mocking their God. And who's coming to bring the food? David. The armor didn't fit him, but he was dressed by God's love. <laughs> he was dressed by God's might because he knew who God was. And there he came and he defeated Goliath. He defeated that giant. No fear. And everybody was like, who's this? Okay, who's this? He defeated the lion a bit. They didn't know it. It was between, between him and God. And here he comes, and suddenly the spotlight is, who is this little guy? This little guy, who's he? Who's this? And the anointing of God was resting upon him. The anointing, he hated evil. He loved Jesus. And what happened? Everybody knew. And from that day, after Saul spoke to David, Jonathan was Saul's son. When he saw, sorry, when he saw David and heard how his father spoke to David, Jonathan was like, oh, this is going to be my friend for life. I just love everything about David. I just see that God is with him. And the Bible says from that moment, so, oh, Jonathan loved David as he loved his own life. If you go to 1 Samuel 20, I want you to, I'm going to start reading from there. 1 Samuel 20. So Jonathan just knew that this is God. God is upon David. And, and I know that Jonathan also was a very beautiful person. He loved God as well. And he knew the presence of God. Because at a time, God really walked with Saul. And David knew that. But let's start here. It's David. He comes to Jonathan and he says, What have I done? Of what am I guilty? What is my sin before your father that he seeks my life? And Jonathan said, God forbid, you shall not die. My father does nothing great or small but what he tells me. And why should he hide this thing from me? It is not so. So they made a plan and, and Jonathan said, I will always tell you, whatever happens, I will just be there for you. Don't worry. Even if my father is king, I love you. I recognize God is with you, and I will help you. Let's go to verse 13. The Lord do so and much more to Jonathan. But if it please my father to do you harm, then I will disclose it to you and send you away that you may go in safety. And may the Lord be with you as he has been with my father can you hear it? So even Jonathan recognized that the presence and the spirit and the love and the peace of God wasn't with his father anymore because Saul was tormented. He was jealous about David. He, there was just evil spirits. Instead of humbling himself, asking for forgiveness, he just went on and he was tormented. The moment when you step into those kind of things and you're overwhelmed by looking at other people and becoming jealous and, and you don't stay with the plan of God for your heart and your life, there's a lot of things we can mention. Hatred and fear and all those things come into your life. And Saul knew that. And what is he saying in verse 13, 14? He says, while I am still alive, you, David, shall not only show me the loving kindness of the Lord, so that I die not. But also you shall not cut off your kindness from my house forever. Say kindness from my house forever. No, not even when the Lord has cut off every enemy of David from the face of the earth. So Jonathan made a covenant with the house of David. 
And that's what happened. That word loving kindness means tenderness, consideration towards others. It means to bend or bow your, oneself. It means to be gracious or merciful. Psalm 136 says, The loving kindness of the Lord endures forever. And here's a beautiful picture that you're going to see right now, that even when a new king arrived on the scene, the other king, when he was an enemy and in battle, he had to be closed down, put out. He had to be killed and all his descendants to make sure that no one else will someday say, I have a plan. I'm going to take over this kingdom. You know that, I mean. But here, Jonathan says, I know the grace of God. I've seen him on my father, but I see him on you. And I, I know my dad missed it so badly. But David, you, you, and just like Jesus, is going to show me the loving kindness. And you will not cut off my house forever. Because the Lord is full of grace and full of mercy. And you know what? Another word for that loving kindness means something you can always rely on. You might fail yourself. People might fail you. Situations may fail you, but here's something that you couldn't rely on. And the moment when you see it like David saw it in being a shepherd boy, if you can see the loving kindness of God, you will know that this is something I can always rely on. I mean, this was the Old Testament. In other places, it didn't happen. And even when, um, while Saul missed it so badly, yes, he died. And yes, Jonathan died. And let's go there. At the battle of Gilboa, they died. 2 Samuel 9. Before we go there. So what happened is, here Saul died and Jonathan died at the battle of Gilboa. And what happened is, they made sure that all of the other people that were in the kingdom and descendants, they also died. It wasn't David's wish. The moment when he heard that Saul and Jonathan especially died, he rented his clothes. He was mourning. The Bible says he went in lamentation. He couldn't eat because of his friend that he loved so dearly. He was even angry about it. He was mad about it. And after recovering from that, not like 100%, but feeling that in his heart, he went on. And David became stronger and stronger. God was with him. He saw awesome things, one battle after battle. And then one day, one day, it came to his thoughts and to his heart. Let's see here, 2 Samuel 9 verse 1. And David said, Is there still anyone left of the house of Saul, to whom I may show kindness for Jonathan's sake. Is there anyone? Yes, I know they don't deserve it. They, they don't even, they can't even earn it. I'm king, everybody loves me. I mean, God is just all over me. The love and kindness that you can always rely on. Is there someone left? And of the house of Saul, there was a servant whose name was Ziba. It was Saul's servant before. When they had called him to David, he said to him, Are you Ziba? He said, I, your servant, am he. The king said, Is there not still someone of the house of Saul to whom I may show the unfailing, unsought, unlimited mercy and kindness of God? And Ziba replied, Jonathan has yet a son, and he don't give us his name yet. Yes, he has a son who is lame in his feet. He's lame in his feet. He needs people to depend on. It's quite impossible for him to just walk normal like other people. But there's one son left. Second Samuel 4, you don't have to go there. I'm just going to tell you what happened. Because while the battle went on, Saul and Jonathan was killed. 
And, he's, and Jonathan's little son, Mephibosheth, Mephibosheth, he was with his nurse. And the Bible said, Jonathan Saul's son had a son who was a cripple in his feet. He was five years old when the news came out of Jezreel of the death of Saul and Jonathan. And the boy's nurse took him up and fled. When she heard what happened, she decided, no, they're going to kill him. I love him. I'm going to try and rescue him. I'm going to run with him and we're going to hide. She tried her best, but yet, in her haste, he fell and became lame. His name was Mephibosheth. His name meant out of the mouth of shame. Out of the mouth of shame. And they don't call him by his name. They call him, he's a cripple and he's, he's a cripple, he's lame. It's not going to be any use to you. Nobody yet killed him. But he's, he's alive, he's there. Verse 4, one, 2 Samuel 9 verse 4. And the king said, why is he crippled? No, 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 no. Crippled? Oh, no, okay, don't worry. No, 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 no. David wasn't worried about this. His heart was full of the loving kindness of God. He says, where is he? Ziba replied, he's in the house of Machir, son of Amiel, in Lodebar. The king David sent and brought him from the house of Machir, son of Amiel, at Lodebar. Lodebar means no thing. Nothing. So he was Meshi Mephibosheth, meaning shame, dwelt in low Debar, who means no thing, no word, no communication. And the most beautiful one for me is no pasture. There was no word from God. There was no hope. There was no pasture for him to feed on. No communication. He was left in his shame as a crippled, staying in that place. And how many of us can look at our own lives today and maybe think, yes, do I have a word? Am I crippled? I can't. It's impossible for me to even even sit at a table, to even be recognized. It's impossible for me. And he's sitting in that place and David says, go and get him from that no pasture. Go and get him from that no place. Go and get him from no communication. Verse 6. And Mephibosheth, son of Jonathan, son of Saul, came to David and fell on his face. David said, Mephibosheth. And he answered, Behold your servant. David said to him, Fear not. It's the first thing. Because he knew that David could kill him just there, right now. Because Saul's dead, his father is dead, all the sons are dead. He's the only one left. And the first thing, David, David means beloved. It means loving. The first thing he's saying to this man is fear not. The Bible says, doesn't God's perfect love drive out all fear? Look at the love and the mercy and grace of God starting to work. Look at the loving kindness. He says, fear not. For I will surely show you kindness for Jonathan, your father's sake, and will restore to you all the land of Saul, your father, and you shall eat at my table always. You see, this is so heavy upon me. If you see the loving kindness of God, no problem is too big to overwhelm you. If you understand the love of God, no lion, no bear, no sickness, no fear can overwhelm you. When the loving of kindness of God comes in this morning, he says, I will restore you no matter what. I will restore you because of my loving kindness. Fear not. No matter what, no matter where, no matter how, no matter who. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? What can man do to me? 
And there's so many scriptures I can go on and just quote and quote. But here's the loving kindness of God. And it comes and it says, I will restore to you all the land. And you shall eat at my table, the king's table. You know, that's a place of honor. Not everybody goes and sits at the king's table. Here's David's children dressed. Here's people coming and sitting in this table. And and God is restoring this crippled. And you're going to come and sit. You're going to go and sit at my table. Let's go on reading. And the cripple bowed himself and said, What is your servant that you should look upon such a dead dog as I am? Yes, not one of us deserved the greatness and the beauty and the love of Jesus. Not even one of us deserve it. And he saw himself like that. He felt like a forgotten dead dog in a place with no pasture. Verse 9. Then the king called to Ziba, soul servant, and said to him, I have given your master's son, grandson, grandson, all that belonged to Saul and to all his house. In one day, Mephibosheth was rich. He got that land. And then even in verse 10, David told Ziba, who was first Saul's servant, to go and till the land for him and for his son and his servants, and you shall bring in the produce that your master's hair may have food to eat. But Mephibosheth said, your master's son, grandson, shall eat always at my table. Repeating it, can you hear it? It's like if God does something in his loving kindness, it's always. You can always always rely on him. You can always go and sit at this table. Verse 11, then Ziba said to the king, your servant will do according to all my lord the king commands. So Mephibosheth ate at David's table as one of the king's sons. When you realize, we all can say we are Christians and we are We love Jesus and we are a child of God. But the moment you realize the loving kindness, no mountain can move you. No problem can shake you. You know you are a child of God and you realize your authority that you have. His authority has even been restored sitting there at the king table, king's table. Verse 12, okay, verse verse 13, let's go there first. So Mephibosheth dwelt in Jerusalem. Jerusalem was not a place of no pasture. Jerusalem, meaning, is the city of peace. And he had peace. He, was, he dwelt in the city of peace, for he ate continually at the king's table, even though he was lame in both feet. He couldn't move himself and proceed in life like he wanted to. Do. It was quite impossible But the loving kindness and mercy and grace of Jesus came to him because of Jonathan and David's oath. And here he was restored. No one could have done that. Somebody else did it on his behalf. And isn't that what Jesus did for all of us? We didn't deserve it. We can't even repay him. We don't even earn it. He came and he took our place on that cross. He came and he took our place on our behalf. He died. On our behalf, he became pure. Ah, poor. On our behalf, he became full of, uh, was called the man full of sorrows. All our troubles, all our worries, all evil spirits just came upon him. It just came upon him. Let's go to Psalm 23. We all know this. Just remember where I started with David, the shepherd's shepherd, looking after the sheep. Let's read Psalm 23, verse 1. The Lord is my shepherd. To feed, guide, and shield me, I shall not lack. This is called the Psalm of David. I shall not lack. Think about Mephibosheth sitting in a place with no pasture. And look here in verse 2 what God did for him. He makes me lie down (laughs) in fresh, tender, green pastures. 
He leads me beside still and restful waters. No more shame. You've taken my shame and turned it into glory. Verse 3, he refreshes and restores my life, myself. He does it. He restores my life. He restored me if he was it life. He leads me in the paths of righteousness, uprightness, and right standing with him. Not for my earning it, but for his name's sake. Yes, thou I walk through the deep sunless valley of the shadow of death. I will fear or dread no evil. For you, your love are with me. Your kindness are with me. Your rod to protect and your staff to guide. They comfort me. You, verse 5, prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Let's just stop there for a minute. Do you know who's this table? It's the sacrifice of Jesus, where he says, come unto me, all are thirsty. I have been broken. My body has been broken as bread. Come eat of me. Come get your promises. Come get your joy, your peace. Be restored to self. Here's the green pasture. It's me. And here's my blood. The water, the living water that just flows. Come and eat at my table. Come eat my living words and see who you are. Learn from me. Come get your promises. Arise from that place of dust, no, of shame, no pasture. Come communicate. Come sit with me. Come speak with me. Come feel my love. Come find your forgiveness. Get rid of your condemnation and shame. Come and sit with me at this table. Forget about your enemies. I laugh at your enemies. I love you. This is the table. And if you are sitting at a table of love, if you are fed by love, no problem can hold you. Nothing is too great or too big for you. You see, if you have this, this oppression or if you, have, or if you are deep, depressed, depression is holding you, man. If you are troubled, if you just keep on sinning and being a slave of sin, it's holding you. If you are bitter and you don't have forgiveness and you just hate and you have these feelings, you are overcome by, by it. You are, you are overcome by evil. You are eating and speaking the wrong things. If you always feel bad about yourself, you make yourself bigger than Jesus. He loves you. He made you. You are overcome and you are hauled by lies. You are not sitting at the table. You are crippled. And we need to come to a place. I want to sit at your table. I want to sit at your feet. There's a song like that. I want to sit at your feet. The more I seek you, the more I find you. That's true. Because the more you look into the word, you more realize his love and you start loving yourself. And you're not so occupied with everybody else and everybody else doings. And you just sit at his table and his love overcomes your fear. His love overcomes your depression. His love overcomes your hate. His love just changes you and washes you and it just comes and it comes and his loving kindness comes and there's just grace and there's just grace. And the more you have grace for yourself and your own mistakes, you can just give grace to everybody. Once I was like, Lord, no, I'm a sinner. Woo! And it wasn't even a bad thing. It was something like thoughts I, I had or something. And I was like, no, I must give my heart to you again. I'm a sinner. And, and I went on like that. And it was like I could hear God so loudly. Oh, so it's bigger than me. You say that your mistakes and your problems are bigger than my blood. And I was like, mute. I said, Jesus, sorry, sorry. And I knelt down. I lifted my eyes up. Your blood speaks a better word. 
Your blood is bigger. Your blood is bigger. Thank you, my conscience. Wash my conscience. Your blood is bigger. Wash my conscience. Your love come. Wash my conscience. And yes, it's been a bad many days, many times. And God just said, you stay close to me. You stay close to me. Oh, my love. I love you. 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 I love you always, forever, near and far. <laughs> I can't remember the rest of the words. <laughs> Jesus loves you. His loving kindness you can always rely on. There's no crack. There's no crumble. His love is reliable. His love is sure. His love is a mystery. His love is the building block between all of us that builds the church. And this is the table of God, the table of his grace and of his love. It's a table where all of us are going to sit at his body. Elvis Blue si sings a song. He says, Ons sal amal een dag, ons gaan amal een dag om die self te tafel sit. Amal. Even the people who crucified Jesus, if they gave their hearts to Jesus, I believe, <laughs> We're all going to sit at the same table. All the people you maybe have problems with or feelings, you, you yourself are going to sit there at that table. And even right now we can sit there. Let's have the love and kindness of God in our hearts and don't stay crippled in our minds or in our bodies because Jesus has promises for each and every one in this place. Each and every one, no matter how rich, no matter how poor, no matter how pretty, no matter, no matter what. He came to that crippled with no posture. And he said, where are you? Where are you? And I want to end off with a scripture that says, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Because this is the table of, when you sit at the table, you can just say, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not, forget not all his benefits, who redeemed thy life from destruction, who crowned thee with a loving kindness and tender, tender mercies, who satisfy thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord execute righteousness and judgment for all that are oppressed there's good news for you if you're oppressed you need to say lord forgive us of our sins of our trespasses and so we also need to forgive others but let's just go to that place where we was where he says he just um it was psalm 103 Verse 6, the Lord executes righteousness and justice, not for me only, but for all who are oppressed. Do you know that this was also a psalm of David? Do you know that? Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. He, not only for me, but for all who are oppressed. It goes on, verse 7. He made known his ways of righteousness and justice to Moses. His acts to the children of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and plenteous and mercy and loving kindness. In this story, I also want you to see that no matter what Saul did, no matter how disobedient you were, when they met with the loving kindness of God, nothing stick to Mephibosheth. He was in one day completely free. And I've heard this couple of weeks, really, I've heard a lot of people say, I have the sickness because it's part of my dad. My mom had it, my dad had it, my, everybody had it. Yes, there's a curse on my father, so there's going to be a curse on me, a curse on my children, a curse on everything. I want to tell you that's a lie from hell. Today, that's a lie Today, make a decision. My heart's not going to fail like my father's. I'm not going to have cancer like my mother. It's not in the tree, the family tree. You don't have to go back ages and ages to go and look at all that stuff. You can in one day say, I am a new creation in Christ Jesus. I have the same nature. I have the same 
ability. I am washed by His blood. No sickness is too big. I don't matter where it's hanging on that tree. Curse that tree. Jesus died on the tree at Calvary. And He opened the tree, the tree of life, for all of us to enter and receive His promises once we sit at His table and feed on His loving kindness, which we can always depend on. Hallelujah. Verse 6 of Psalm 23 says, Surely, or only goodness, mercy, and unfailing love shall follow me all the days of my life. And through the length of my days, the house of the Lord and His presence, presence shall be my dwelling place. You know, if you say goodness, you speak about Jesus Christ, who in His goodness came and showed Himself to us, full of grace and mercy. When you come to unfailing love, you look at the Father who lay down, uh, uh, the Father who sent His Son, for that's how much He loved us. John 3 verse 16. So here's the goodness of Jesus Christ. He's the loving kindness of the Father giving us His Son. And here it says, shall follow me. It's the Holy Spirit which shall follow you all your days. The Father, the Son, and the Spirit. Their goodness, their mercy, and their unfailing love that shall follow you all the days of your life. And you will dwell in the presence of the Most High God. All you need to do is sit at His table and learn more about this love. No matter where you find yourself today, no matter what you think about yourself, I want to tell you, there's a place, there's a green pasture. There's a place between, beside waters of rest for your troubled soul, for your broken body. There's a table where Jesus laid down his life for you so you can feed on his goodness, on his loving kindness, on his mercy. There's a song that says, Arise, my love, arise, my love, death no longer has a hold on you. No grave, no suffering, not even death sting can keep you from the love of Jesus. It's actually a song, a song that says, arise, my love. And this week, the last two weeks, I've just been singing that song when I walk, arise, my love, arise, my love. And it's as if God wants to say through this whole message, because of his loving kindness, because of his goodness, because of his table and him restoring you, he wants to say, arise, awake from whatever. Arise, my love, arise. These things don't, no longer has a hold on you. Just like Jesus rose up from the grave, he showed us no death, no depression, no demon in hell, no unforgiveness, no bitterness, no jealousy, no hurt could keep him underneath that grave. He arose. You know what he displayed? The power of love. The power of love displayed its might and its power because there's a power in the loving kindness of God. And he doesn't see you as a dog. He doesn't see you as a nobody. He doesn't see you without a posture. How do you see yourself? Jesus loves you. And Jesus loved me. And this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Let's stand up. Let's just stand up. If your family is with you today, I ask that you will just hold them or take their hand. You can do that because you're with them all the day long. If you're a big family, just stand close and, and take a hand. Or give a hug and just hold like that. And I'm just going to pray with you. And I'm just going to agree with you for the loving kindness of God and of Jesus. He sees you and you are beautiful and he loves you. Lord Jesus, I thank you that I can just say right now over this whole crowd, the Lord is our shepherd. We shall not lack. Thank you, Lord. You lead us to green pastures. 
you take our soul to restful places. Thank you, Lord, that surely we will sit at your table and feed on your goodness. And thank you, Lord, that surely goodness, mercy, and loving kindness will follow them and us all of our days because you love us, Lord, and we can rely on your loving kindness. Thank you that they will arise from whatever. They will arise from their own opinions. Right now, they will arise from sickness. They will arise from any, any little thing that's irritating and not from God. They will arise from unforgiveness and bitterness and jealousy and whatever it might be. They will arise to this life of God, this love to live it and to give it. Yes, Lord. Just as Mephibosheth is sitting at your table, there's a place for him, and there's a place for us. There's a place for every broken child. There's a place for every broken human. There's a place for a king. There's a place for a poor beggar. There's a place for Moses who stuttered, and there's a place for Saul who, who killed people and is now called Paul. There's a place for Samson. There's a place for all of us because you are the one by your blood who justifies us, who make us to stand in right standing with you. Take us into this Holy of Holies right now. Let us go and move to this place where we can meet with our King. We can sup with you. We can eat of your body that's precious, more precious than gold, more precious than silver. We worship you, Jesus. We worship you. Thank you right now that your anointing is in this place, Holy Spirit. And it just it destroys every yoke right now. Destroys every yoke. Every curse being broken and dealt with on the cross. Every sickness has been broken and dealt with on the cross. On your body, Jesus. Just open your heart to Jesus. It was impossible for him to do it by himself. It was impossible. Maybe there's an impossible situation. You have a blood disease for I don't know how many years. You maybe have, have a stuttering problem for how many years. You maybe have a little virus that's appearing now and then. Right now, I want you to put your, body, your, your hand on the place that is irritating you, on your heart, on your child that might be sick. And if there's a child that's sick in this morning, I want you to bring that child so we can pray. But right now, just put your hands there on your mind that's been, your mind and your ears. I, I, I know there's someone, it's like there's no tuning in. It's just shh, distorting the whole time. You can't take all these thoughts. It's troubling and it's just irritating you. Let it go. Let it go. Lift your hands and give it to Jesus. Don't try and just give it. Just give it. Thank you, Jesus. Restful waters. He will restore your soul. He will make you come in tune again. In tune so you can hear his voice and know what is really important in life. Right now, open your heart. Say, thank you, Lord. Yes, I can hear. Am I actually free of this? I thought this was a generational thing. I thought this was part of my life forever. Can I really be free of this? Yes, you can. His love made you free on the cross. His blood washes away all sins and all sicknesses right now. As you are holding those hands, and if you can pray in the tongues, I want you to start praying in tongues right now. For the person on your left, for the person on your right, just start speaking in tongues right now. Some of you are being healed right now by the love and mercy of Jesus. Some of you are being restored right now in the name of Jesus because of his love. Yes, just say thank you, Jesus. While you're praying in tongues, say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Rise, my love. Thank you, Jesus. 
The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercy never comes to an end. They are new every morning. New every morning. Great is your faithfulness, O God. Great is your faithfulness. Great is your faithfulness. Great is your faithfulness. Our rock, our water, our food. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus loves you. Amen.